What's up, nerds? Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom Supplemental Edition for the week of May 28th, 2018. For those of you who are new to the channel and never seen a supplemental on the channel before, the supplemental edition is the extra stuff, the, the catch-all for the what some would argue are the le legitimately nerdy things, not the pop culture nerd, but the actual, like, science nerd and tech nerd and that kind of stuff. That's what goes here. Or stuff that wouldn't fit in other uh, I episodes, or if there's an update that can't wait till next week, that's the kind of stuff that goes here. So all of that said, let's jump into the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, let's get into the sponsor for this week. This week's sponsor is Punishirt.com. You can go get this shirt over at Punishirt.com. That is the only place to get this generally pun shirt. And they have a bunch of other stuff up there as well. So visit the little uh, address that's going across the bottom of your screen right now. I'm so grateful for the guys over at Punishirt.com. They are sponsoring all of this week's episodes. So thank you guys very, very much. And now let's jump into the news. This week on your supplemental, we have a proper full show. Not like last week where it was just got to get it out, got to get it out. This week, we are actually doing a full and proper amount of uh, talking points. The first bit that we have this week is Hack the Planet. Uh, kind of. Uh, or maybe not exactly that. I just like to throw in pop culture references from when I was a kid. But, uh, so, cell phone networks, in at least in America, I, I, I couldn't find if this was the case anywhere else, but in, in the States... Uh, we have a uh, uh, very old, out-of-date system that is kind of important to our the integrity of our uh, infrastructure for cell phones. It's called Signal System 7, and it is a protocol that effectively allows us cell phone users to travel between um, travel between the the different service towers. So when I go out of my network on Verizon and I'm in a place that's technically only a sprint area, I'm not going to get charged anything extra um, because of this, this protocol. And it's actually an, an adaptation of a protocol from 1975 that was put in, in place for telecom companies that allowed them to communicate. I don't I don't remember exactly what its original purpose was for, but its current purpose uh, basically allows you to roam without roaming. Um, this news bit was surprisingly caught by the Washington Post when they got somehow, go figure, Washington Post got a, a correspondence between a Democratic senator and uh, someone from Homeland Security... Uh, where the Homeland Security agent was letting the senator know that uh, they found this uh, this weakness in our cell phone. And so basically, th because this, this protocol, before I get into that, how it got found, because this protocol is so old, it doesn't have any security, basically. So it's just open for hackers or for uh, the Russians. Heaven forbid. Oh no, the Russians are coming. But no, legit, for hackers, this is easily how uh, so many celebrities are getting their accounts hacked is because of this, pro of this protocol. So this was uh, a letter that somehow the Washington Post got from a Democratic senator that it's actually from Homeland Security to a Democratic senator. So my money says the Democratic senator gave it to the Washington Post to uh, be the ones that could break this story wide open. Um, 
but so it's yeah it's known and actually it's this is not the first time that the FCC has been alerted to this uh, they were alerted uh, once a few years ago as well, and th it's their protocol, so they should know that there's no security on it. Um, but when the Washington Post reached out to the FCC, the FCC said, and I'm kind of quoting, that they have received and are reviewing the letter between Homeland Security and the Democratic Senator. Uh, I th This is a little scary, guys. Um I'm grateful that the only thing I use my cell phone for is text and phone calls. I don't use it for anything else. I don't, I can't use it for anything else because if you know me, you know I still use a dumb phone. Uh, and now that's starting to pay off. But that's all we have there. Next, we're talking about Virgin. Yes, that company that started by the crazy eccentric billionaire in England, Richard Branson, uh, is now Virgin Galactic. That's not the news. The news is, and there's a link to a uh, video in the description, the news is Virgin Galactic is getting one step closer to their space tourism goal. Uh, they just flew the, uh, the, where is it? The U USS Unity. Um, and it, this was the first powered rocket uh, space uh, test. So they've turned the engine on for the Unity before. This was the first time they've done it in flight because the way it works is it's connected to two other rockets, which is effectively another spacecraft. That craft gets it up into the air, and then Unity, in, in, which is between the other two rockets, then ignites its engines and goes even further up. This didn't go into orbit by any means. It was just a... a test to see if the rockets worked so it kept going straight but still a test um could richard branson be giving elon musk a run for his money in the crazy eccentric billionaire club uh i i say yes i i am super excited to see how this plays out because branson and elon musk both are going to be proof for uh, the free market, right? Like, because the governments got out of the space race, and officially our government got out of the space race like two or three years ago, um, now that leaves the market open for people with the money to do this. And just as kind of proof of concept. But uh, either way, it's really cool. And this also is one step closer to potentially doing manned crafts, though they did have some issue with manned crafts back in 2016, I believe. Uh, something along those lines. I apparently didn't put it in my notes. 2016-ish, they lost a co-pilot. He died in a test run. Um, so I would imagine Branson is right back to where he was, uh, back to the drawing board as it were, and is getting things taken care of. But again, check out the link in the description. It's all about, it's, it's them watching the rocket fly, which is really interesting. Then our next bit of news has to do with nuclear power and actually specifically nuclear batteries. Uh, so Russian, Russian researchers, try saying that one three times fast. Russian research, researchers, I can't even say it twice, slow, uh, have made a giant step forward in nuclear-powered world. Uh, they, they didn't create nuclear batteries. Nuclear batteries have actually been around f uh, since 1913. They were created by, by a scientist named Henry Mosley. Uh, they also didn't exactly perfect nuclear batteries that happened in about 1953 with the scientist Paul Rappaport who uh not necessarily he modernized the the methodology for building them but in that modernization uh is the fact that you need a lot of diamond semiconductors to make these nuclear batteries work so what these Russian researchers, hey, I said it that time, what these Russian researchers, that's twice, have been able to do is they've been able to synthesize very thin diamond semiconductors. 
uh, the the process for making these batteries also needs the uh, needs an element called nickel sixty three, um, which is the thing that is now what is in high demand and low supply. So they still are having issues with creating them, but they are, they have drastically reduced the cost for creating these batteries. Now, why is this important? Because nuclear power is what is going to get us into space. One of these nuclear batteries will run at it at output at the proper output level for approximately 100 years. So if we're going into space and we need things to function properly, we can't exactly take out the battery once it's dead and put in a new one because what if that's the battery that that uh, is is directly linked to <clears throat> what if that's the battery that's directly linked to life support or what if that's the battery that everything relies on you can't take that battery out so if you have a battery that runs for 100 years that will make space exploration a lot more feasible that actually makes a lot of things a lot more feasible but then you have to deal with the fallout uh, from these batteries it, so you can't really put them in smaller consumer products necessarily um but, I mean, I, I would imagine we're not really that far away from the potential of that. So, this is really awesome. This, this is really for an industrial purpose, but everything that gets produced at that level eventually works its way down so that it does become a consumer product. So, science fiction writers, there you go. There's something for, for your new science fiction. This is now becoming a feasible future for us. <clears throat> And then our last bit of news for the supplemental edition of this week's Week in Nerddom has to do with Spotify one more time. This is an update to the music uh, episode at the beginning of the week. <sighs> okay, so let's recap the Spotify issue. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think it was about two weeks ago, maybe it was three, Spotify announced that they were going to hold the artists on their platform to a standard in which they they expect them to conduct themselves in a respectable fashion, even and, and not even like lyrical content or musical content or anything like that. This is in their everyday lives. Spotify said, if you're not a good person, then we're going to limit the people who can hear your music. They didn't remove people, but they took them off of their algorithm built playlists, which a lot of people subscribe to. So we talked Monday about how they reversed their uh, decision on certain artists, specifically XXXTentacion, and now CEO Daniel Eck has said that they rolled it out incorrectly. And there, 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 uh, there was one press release that said we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna scale it back a little bit, and then like the very next day, they released another press release that said, "Actually, we're just gonna nix this thing altogether." Um, so, and he said, uh, "Across all genres, our role is not to regulate artists. Therefore, we are moving away from implementing a policy around artist conduct." Yeah, because duh, that that just seems like. You can't stop someone from being a horrible person. Um, you can, though, not carry their music, which is what they were trying to do. And people didn't like it. People were like, we don't care if they're horrible people. We want to dance. We want to shake our booties or whatever. So Spotify completely got rid of their new policy in response to people saying, no, let us shake our groove things. Uh, so yeah, I just... This was such a weird thing in music. I don't even know where I stand. Like, yeah, censorship is bogus, but they're a private-owned company, and they're responding to the market. So there you go. I, I agree with the decision. They should have never rolled it out in the first place. I think that's kind of where I'm where I am, am, am falling on this. Is like, why would you even try to do this to begin with? But that, guys, is where we're ending this week's supplemental video. 
Thank you, thank you for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss all across this great nerddom? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can go and find all the freebies, all the social medias. You can get your nerdy swag all up on the website, generallynerdy.net. Look, it's even on my shirt, generallynerdy.net, said in the announcer voice. Or, if you want to help the channel a little more directly, there is a Patreon page, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Just a dollar a month does the thing, and you get all of the stuff up on the Patreon. Well, the dollar is, you get early access, and you get the Renaissance Nerd videos, uh, the proper version of the Renaissance Nerd videos with all of the instructions and uh, written commentary. If you are new to the channel, guys, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, do all the things and the stuff, guys, always, always remember... That if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.